G'day everyone. You know, if you're a watch enthusiast, it doesn't matter if you've been into it for a few weeks or a few years, you'll likely be aware of the existence of the Orient Bambino. And because of its immense popularity and numerous variations, you'll find hundreds if not thousands of reviews out there about it, with most opinions being positive overall. And I share this sentiment as well, but to a point where I feel this watch is more deserving of a review. So if now I'll start getting starry-eyed and compose this love letter to my V2 Bambino. I first saw you many years ago online when I was new to watch collecting. Other, more seasoned reviewers had said great things about you and when I saw your picture, your beauty and uniqueness left me reeling and I knew I needed you in my life. After one online order and several weeks of waiting, you finally arrived. And in my inexperienced mind, you were stunning. I didn't know a lot about watch measurements or crystal types, but at the time none of that mattered to me. Everyone knew you. Everyone sang your praises and it was easy to see why you had such a strong effect on others. Your cream coloured dial gives you a look that is somehow elegant, understated and unique. That unique beauty also extends to your applied indices, which are an interesting mix of batons at every odd number interval, with Roman characters at every even number. One thing I loved about you was your two chapter rings running around your edge, with the tiniest square markers at every minute and a slightly thicker square at 5 minute intervals on the outside and just below that is your other minute track with numerals at every 5 minutes and an added bonus of 3 tiny markers in between the seconds. But you were never one to show off, only revealing them to me when I needed them most, and setting an accurate time was always an easy task thanks to you. And this was made even easier thanks to your well-sized, unsigned granite 3 o'clock that's easy to grip and engage, and doesn't rattle around between my fingertips or spin the hands too freely when getting that precise second to hold. The way that you subtly flaunt your Orient logo and text on the dial was always a welcome wink and a nudge to all that beheld you. Those that didn't know you were still enamoured by your appearance, and those that did always had quiet respect for you. It always exuded class with the Lion and Shield logo, along with the automatic and water-resistant text and running writing below, but you never boasted about these things. Even your Japan movement and specifications text in your 6 o'clock position was our little secret but a bit less secretive was your date complication at 3 o'clock. It was a simple affair without any fanciness or grandeur, but it told me what I needed to know was never overbearing. But your Dauphine hands told a different story. Yes, they are slender and don't have a large presence, but their blue colour stands out in a beautiful contrast to the otherwise subdued colour of your dial. Even the second's hand that dances gracefully across your dial has the same blue tone. And I have always appreciated that your movement was made in-house by Orient, which is very uncommon for other watches at the price that you command. Your case is simple, with its brushed sides and polished lug ends and bezel, and the case back proudly showing your Orient brand and specifications is equally a straightforward affair. But they all looked apart, do their job well, and thanks to the minimal curve on your lugs, make wearing you a comfortable experience. Yet, despite all the good times we shared together, we did have our rocky episodes. Your 30 meters of water resistance was not really something you could brag about, but I could live with that as I would never dream of taking you swimming. Your dome mineral crystal was lovely to gaze at on angles, but after learning about sapphire, this was something I wished you had. And your stock strap suited your looks well, but it was so stiff and plasticky to wear. And despite my best efforts to introduce new straps to you to try out, either you were too dressy for them or you wouldn't suit their look properly. And having that 21mm lug width didn't help us with choice variety either. And I guess I was just being selfish. I wanted you to change, but you were who you were. And so after some time and less wear, we decided to go our separate ways, and I'd hoped you would find someone who would appreciate you for you. But after some time apart and talking to someone special, they reminded me how great we were together, and it was a shame that we'd separated. So after some soul and online searching, I found you again, ordered you and had you back in my life again, never to let you go. Over time you'd shown signs of wear, but I didn't care about that. If anything, it gave you character. And together we also found the perfect strap that looks wonderful on you, but also gives you a chance to be either a bit dressy or a bit casual, almost like an EDC. You may not have the greatest specs, and a few may dismiss you as a budget offering, but none of that matters to me. You are unique, you are beautiful, and imperfectly perfect. And although there are times that I won't be wearing you, Always remember that in the watch world you hold a special place in my heart and will always be in my thoughts. Love, Troppo. <clears throat> well, if there's a watch, no matter the budget or brand, that holds a special place in your heart and collection, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for now, and thanks for watching, eh?